Good morning, folks. It was a relatively calm day again on our star. Just a couple minor filament pops, north and south. Neither will produce a significant CME. Let's quickly look at our planetary visibility, starting with Jupiter in the pre-dawn sky. Then, in the evening, Saturn and Mars become visible after sunset. That's good to note with sighting spring approaching Mars on October 19th. Get your scopes ready. Folks, we've known for weeks that the stereo spacecraft positioned behind the sun would soon lose contact due to having that giant ball of fire in their line of sight. With Stereo B not updated since late September, we may have entered that period already. Updates to come. Solar wind shows fairly calm conditions the last 24 hours. Got some density spikes that brought the KP index up a bit, but it's nothing major. Solar flaring continues to be very weak, and this is expected to continue as the sunspot trough is rapidly approaching. That centralmost group might be regaining a gamma class, but it's a strain to predict any activity from those spots. Definitely focused on the incoming coronal hole. You can see the extension of the southern opening looking dark and actually up near the equator. Luckily that extension is weaker than the polar core of the coronal hole, but indeed Gong confirms we're looking at a trans-equatorial extension there. Top quakes of the day remain near the West Pacific, including a downgraded rumble at New Zealand. Also took one above average southeast of Africa. Don't forget, we're just two days away from the lunar eclipse. Europe and Africa don't have much visibility, but the Americas and the Far East will see Earth cast its shadow on the moon. Let's quickly run down the state of the climate records. Below the video, you'll have a link to the official site maintained by NOAA. Starting with the United States, there have been more than 81,000 daily temperature records broken in the last 365 days. Interestingly, the cold records are somewhat dominating the heat records during that period. Globally, we are still watching heat in the lead, but the lead is dwindling. Over 2,700 monthly temperature records have fallen in the United States the past year. Cold still showing dominance there, while it has yet to catch up to the monthly records broken at the global level. Let's also discuss the ice. The Arctic sea ice is way below average, but also way above the low point set two years ago. We're about 50% recovered from 2012, and that is amazing. Meanwhile, Antarctic sea ice is still at all-time highs, which were also set last year. Now, it's vital to note that this is surface ice, and the total volume is actually decreasing as the western sheet loses mass from the underside. We now know that there are major underwater volcano eruptions directly beneath that melt, and scientists have confirmed a geothermal genesis to that underside melting. Well, folks... That last round of storms brought flooding to widespread areas in the east. This was the scene in Kentucky. Meanwhile, we must again put the U.S. Southwest on alert as we've got the precipitable water overlay on for Simon, dropping a ton of rain around the system and slated to shoot north towards the border of California and Arizona. Keeping the precipitable water overlay on, we see heat and moisture from the Gulf heading north to meet some very different air coming south from the northwest. Their convergence this evening brings our next severe storm warnings. Please check your forecasts around lunchtime. After Fan Phone brought 42-foot waves to Japan, it's ready to depart with Vong Fong in its wake, ready to make a northerly run right behind it. Eyes open. In Europe, I've got the pressure overlay on so you can see the strength of this low spanning from Iceland to the coast of the mainland. Also note the low in the Mediterranean and the purple precipitation zones this evening should be no surprise. Down under, I've got the temperature overlay on, but you can see the convergence of an Antarctic low reaching up to southeastern Australia. Those are our top watches tonight. And we've also got purple over New Zealand due to a residual moisture flow over that region. Folks, Helio Viewer has not updated for three days. We're once again at SDO for shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.